Inside the Story with Scott Pelley. I was thinking about stories that we might do for 60 Minutes around the pandemic, of course, and and one of the stories that had interested me for years was where did these viruses come from? So I asked one of my producers, Ashley Veely, I said, let's do a story about the origin of the virus. Go find some people who know about this. What do we know about the current coronavirus? Not a lot, to be honest. I mean, we know it's very similar to SARS, but it is different. So she comes back with an interview for me with a man named Peter Daszak. And I thought, wow, that name seems familiar. Of course, it was the same Peter Daszak I had done the story with for 60 Minutes 17 years ago. Well, back in 2003, we were with Peter Dasak and his virus hunters. We sailed in a small boat from Malaysia to a tiny island off the coast. There was an outbreak of a new virus that at the time was called Nipah virus. And Peter Dashak and the rest of his team had gone to Malaysia to try to figure out why people were suddenly being infected. And it turned into a fascinating detective story. They realized that the people who were infected were all pig farmers. And they discovered that the pigs had the virus. But then the question became, how did the pigs get it? Well, in Malaysia, pig farmers grow fruit trees over their pigsties. What obviously happened here was fruit bats were feeding in these trees and somehow dropping bits of fruit into the pig pens, the pigs would eat them and then get infected. That's what we think happened here. And that's how we got Nipah virus into the human population. But the issue is not limited to bats. Sure. All wildlife species carry viruses, and it's just a matter of coming into contact with those viruses that you find out whether they're going to transmit into humans or not. So really what we need is, is a surveys that go out after wildlife species and see what pathogens they carry. I went back and looked at that story, and when I saw the sound in which he says, what worries me is that there's going to be a SARS virus, and it's going to go around the world it was jaw-dropping. What worries me the most is that we're going to miss the next emerging disease, that we're going to suddenly find a SARS virus that moves from one part of the planet to another, wiping out people as it moves along. And I think we need to get out there and look for these before they emerge. It's important to remember that we don't yet know the origin in the wild for the virus that's causing the pandemic, which is officially known as SARS-CoV-2. It's very close, about 96% the same as a particular virus in bats. How do you know which is the band that corresponds to SARS? So you really, we, we, we can look at that. Peter Daszak worked with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they literally captured 10,000 bats. And they took blood samples from the 10,000 bats, and they found 50 coronaviruses that had been unknown. No one knew they were out there, and yet they had the capability of moving from the wild into human beings. So they created a catalog of the genomes of all of these viruses. Have there been any benefits from this work so far? Well, you know, the, the breakthrough drug rem remdesivir that seems to have some impact on COVID-19 was actually tested against the viruses we've discovered under our NIH research funding. And so that testing would not have been possible no, if it, it hadn't not. been for the work that you did with the NIH grant. Correct, it would not have been able to happen and we wouldn't have known how good this drug remdesivir is. We actually shot the story just in the last couple of weeks and then after we shot the story, we discovered that the Trump administration had canceled all of his funding, $3.7 million to be spent over five years. When we started to dig into that, we discovered that it was all part of this conspiracy theory, the facts dead wrong, that the $3.7 million was being given to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the Chinese Institute of Virology in Wuhan, China. Well, 
it was never that. That was based on a conspiracy theory. It was based on bad reporting. The $3.7 million was to Peter Dashak's US-based, New York City-based EcoHealth Alliance, which does this virus investigation work all around the world. What does it matter that this grant was terminated? Well, it matters because, number one, our work is used in developing vaccines and drugs to save American lives and lives of people around the world. So that matters a lot. Number two, if we really want to know where viruses are going to emerge and cause the next pandemic, we need to have scientific collaborations like this. There are only eyes and ears on the ground in countries that are very difficult for political reasons to work in. We are the front line of preventing the next pandemic, and we need to get on with our job.